Praise the Lord. Another week has gone by. It's Wednesday afternoon, 2 o'clock. So, I'm going to be going to share my testimony today. So, let's start off with a word of prayer. <laughs> Father in heaven, as we come before you, we give you thanks for another week. Give you thanks for another day you've given us. This fall weather, this autumn time of the year is so beautiful. We know that it's by your handiwork that, that this is, comes about. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you've given us an opportunity to come together in a place of worship. Not, not only in this building, but said we're two or more are gathered together in your name. There you'd be in the midst of them. So wherever your spirit is connected with, with our spirit, there you are. So Lord, we give you praise. Now, be with me. Give me clarity of mind and soul. Guide and direct in all things we say and do. May you be glorified in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is my testimony. I'm going to start off with Proverbs 22.6, where it says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, that says a lot. Now, Pastor Mike says about the uh, the schools, how the, the schools, uh, the public school. They're training up a child in a way they want them to go. <clears throat> but we as Christians should train up a child in the way in the ways of the Lord. So, uh, you wonder why there's so much trouble, turmoil in the out there right now. And that's why. Okay. My name is Benjamin Lee Hikes. The Hikes you can think of is like taking long walks in the woods. That's hikes. Okay. Now, I was born at a very young age. <laughs> All right. Um, I was born August the 21st, 1956. My mom would call me Benny Lee. And my dad, my brothers would would call me Benny, and some would still call me that today. But I prefer to be called Ben. I have five living brothers. Um, when my mom and dad got married, mom told dad that she wanted a dozen children. And to my knowledge, uh, she, she was pregnant about five, about ten times, I guess. Um, a couple of them were miscarries. But eight boys. There was no girls. The eight boys, the oldest named David, right now he's... Uh, 73 years old and then there was Roy now he was one that was stillborn not sure his what his age would be right now but Mark 
uh, he's 70. And then Daniel, and he's 68. Me, Benjamin, uh, I'm 67. I have a brother Asa, and he's 65. And my youngest brother living is Paul, and he's 64. Now Joseph, another stillborn, uh, would be about 63 or 62 years if he was living today. So, so that's, so that's who, my family. Now we grew up in a farm about three miles south of Greencastle, Pennsylvania. Now we went to a Brother in Christ church called Hollow Well over between Greencastle and Waynesboro. My, during my childhood days. And then we went to uh, Antrim Brethren in Christ Church. Right now it's, um, it's on Route 11 between Marion and Greencastle. But it had been just behind Greencastle, um, between Greencastle and Kaufman Station, um, a little brick church. So we, in my teenage years, that's where, um, where I attended with the family. So train up a child in the way he should go. Um, we should, We should take our children to church, not send them. Um, my, my parents always went to church, and we, we look forward to going to church every Sunday. It wasn't a chore. It wasn't a burden. We didn't fight them. In fact, we look forward to it. We we uh, enjoy the time we we spent at church because we had uh, friends, friends, relatives, cousins that attended the church, and so uh, and then. We went to a Roxbury Holiness camp every year uh, in the month of August, the first week in August. Um, we really look forward to that every year too. I remember experiencing some of the moving of the Holy Spirit in that place. And I remember going to the altar many times throughout the years. I knew that I experienced salvation in my teens. It's something I, I, I can't deny. But then, But then here's, here's where my prodigal son story um, takes place. In my teenage years, the way I rebelled was to join my brothers and smoking cigarettes, maybe drinking beer and coffee as we worked on a car in a makeshift garage there on the farm. It was something, we, you know, just to get away, get away from the house and do things in the evening 
And and so I, that's how I started rebelling. But then I graduated in 1976. And after I graduated, I got my first full-time job. And that was a janitor and custodian at the Franklin County Area of Otech School, now called the Career Center, Career and Tech Center, down in Chambersburg. Now here's where my life took a turn. I'm now about 20 years old. I remember a gospel concert at the church, at the Antrim Brother in Christ Church. There was, there was some special singers uh, come in, presented some, you know, the gospel and song. And And I felt convicted. Convicted to make a decision. But a few days later, I was at work at the Votech School. And I told God to leave me alone. I wanted to do things I wanted to do what I wanted to do. That's a dangerous place to be in. You can read in Romans, the first chapter, starting at the 17th verse and reading to the end of the chapter to realize what, what I'm talking about. There's a place where It, it talks about um, for therefore there is righteousness in God re revealed from faith to faith as it is written thou shalt live by faith for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Yeah, I knew the truth as a, as a teenager. I knew what was right and wrong, but I chose to forsake it. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them for the invisible things of him from creation of the world and are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead and that, and that they are without excuse but that when they knew God, see, I knew God as a teenager. They glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They become fools. <clears throat> See, I told God I wanted, I wanted to be left alone. I want to do what, what I want to do. I didn't want him to tell me what, what to do, what was right and what was wrong. I wanted to be wise in my own. But in that, I became fool, changing the glory of the uncorruptible God into images made like corruptible man. And then, therefore God gave them over to uncleanness 
through lust of their own hearts to, to devour dishonor, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And 26 says, and for, for this cause God gave them over unto vile affections. For even their women changed their natural use into which is against nature. And likewise, also men leaving their natural use of the woman, burning in their lust one towards another, man with man working that which is unseemly and receiving themselves, that recompense to their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And then he goes through 20, 29, 30, and 31. I'm not going to read all that, but this is when I want to finish the chapter. Verse 32 says, And knowing the judgment of God, see, I knew, I knew what I was, well, I didn't know the extent, the depth of what was going to happen. But when I turned my back on God, it says, knowing who knew the, knowing the judgments of God, that they that commit such things are worthy of death, not only to do the same, but having pleasure in them that do it. All right. I had an uncle that was gay who approached me, and I accepted. My personality is, I want to get along with anybody. You know, don't, don't make waves, don't, don't fight, don't. Um, I mean, just, just get along. Well, I accepted. And I went. This went on for almost a year. And I went to Dunkin' Donuts after work one night, and a man approached me there and asked me if I wanted to follow him back to his house. So I did. And he tried to do something with me. But I refused. I didn't give in. He tried to get me drunk. I still refused. I wouldn't give in. I came home that night. I got scared. I cried out to God. But I didn't hear anything. I didn't feel anything. That made me more scared. Because I told him to leave me alone. I didn't want to. I didn't want him to bother me anymore. And I thought maybe I'd maybe committed that what what some people call the unpardonable sin. Like Hebrews twelve, sixteen and seventeen talk about. Over. Or Esau. You know, Jacob and Esau. Esau. Um, for a morsel of bread or meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterwards when he 
would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, through, though he thought it carefully with tears. I thought maybe I was at that place. The guy, that God had turned his back on me. But God never turns his back on anyone. We turn our backs on him. He, there's a song that says, He was there all the time. He was there all the time. Yeah. Okay. Um, I must have begged and pleaded with God for for days or, or for weeks. <sighs> then on my 21st birthday, August 21st, 1977, it was a Sunday evening. It's a vesper service at the Franklin County Fair. The Vern Tripp was, was, well, he's a singer from the Blackwood Brothers. Okay. And he was there. And he gave an altar call. And I really dedicated my life to Christ then. See, two things happened that night that day. First thing was I became a free man according to the state of Pennsylvania. So I turned 21. And I became a free man in Christ. Hallelujah. After that, I met my mentor in Christ, my spiritual mentor, Carl Rechtroth. He was a stone and brick mason, an instructor at the Votech School for the masonry class. And they had overnight classes. And I struck up a conversation with him. And he started to show me some things in the Bible. And we became really good friends. So he invited me to come to church with him. So I did. See, when a student is ready, the teacher will appear. So I was ready. I was ready to, for truth. I only wanted to know the truth. I, that's the way I still am. I, I still want to know the truth. What is truth? In fact, Carl had a ministry, a radio ministry, <coughs> uh, back in the... 80s, and it was broadcast on the Shippensburg station Sunday mornings. He called it, What is Truth? So that's what Pilate asked Jesus, because he said, I am, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And, And Jesus, yeah, Pilate says, well, what is truth? Well, okay. Um, and that's, so I went to church with, well, the same church Carl went to. And, and that's where I met Joe Earhart. His parents went to church there. So as time went on, Joe's parents 
had some baby ducks. And he wanted to give them uh, ducks to give to Joe's Uncle Jim. Okay. And so he asked if I would want to go along with him to take him over to his house. So I did. And Joe said he had a cousin named Sylvia that he wanted me to get to know. He wanted to introduce me to her. So I rode along with him. And while we were there at the house, uh, Joe said that he had to leave and go pick up his girlfriend, which was in Shippensburg at the time, and asked if I'd stay there at the house. With so he left me there at the house with <laughs> with his girl, was it um, Sylvia, and and her family. So then, after Joe got back, we were about ready to leave. I asked her if I could come see her again. And she says, oh, I guess if you want to. <laughs> so that's how I met my wife. When we decided to get married, we asked Carl Rexroth to marry us. So he did. We got married June the 30th, 1984. Two years later, Justin was born. On September 4th, 1986. Just two weeks after my 30th birthday. Okay, let's go to the page. Hold on. So then, things happen in Carl's life. I'm not going to go into any kind of detail. That's, that's, that's some personal stuff. But, but uh, Carl came to live with us. And... He stayed with us till he passed away with cancer in 1999. Okay. So then after that, I took a job, well, I transferred a job, working with Walmart, and I transferred to Shimokan, Pennsylvania in October of 2001 and stayed there till April of 2002. I thought it was God's will. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. But when we left, or when I left, left behind a mobile home that was not paid for, there's plumbing, had plumbing issues. I commuted from home to Shimokan for three months. That meant I would work a few days at Shimokan. I'd have a few days off. I'd drive home and be with my family and then turn around and go back, back to work. I did that for three months. And then in January, I moved my family 
up to Shemokin to be with me. Then things started to fall apart up there. They started nitpicking my job, how things were going, and saying that I didn't do uh, things right or not fast enough or some reason. So instead of letting them fire me, I transferred back to Chambersburg. And that was in April when we returned. And then we stayed at Sylvia's mom's house for a couple of months. Then in November, we decided to move to Lurgan, a little town a hmm, couple miles from Roxbury. And we moved in around Thanksgiving uh, 2002 until December, around Christmas of 2016, a year after my wife's mother uh, passed away. So we moved into the ha that house where she grew up in. Uh, with her brother Chris. You know, those that uh, attend here know Chris, you know, Sylvia's brother. Uh, Joe Earhart would be Sylvia's cousin. We, he met uh, Annabelle, which attends here. Uh, so, so Joe, Joe started attending here too. And he asked me several times to come to join him. I, I didn't think I wanted to at the time because of, you know, some thing, you know, I thought that strange, strange beliefs and strange things, you know, I didn't understand the, uh, the charismatic movement. I thought I knew what it was because of some of the teachings and stuff. But, uh, well, but then I, then I became interested when the uh, Asbury revival uh, broke out. And also, when Pastor Locke, Pastor Greg Locke, released his film, Come Out in Jesus' Name. I really got intrigued by that. And so I told Joe I wanted to come and ask him if he would stop and pick me up to bring me. Came by myself the first week. And yeah. So that was about, that was either May or June of this year. And then the second week, I think it was just me and Justin. And then the third week, uh, the three of us, me, Justin, and then my wife, Sylvia. <coughs> and then a week or so went by, I was trying to get my brother, or her brother, Chris, the cop. We finally got him talked into coming. And then, yeah. So, so Joe picks us up every Sunday evening, brings us to church. So we come every Sunday evening, sometimes Sunday mornings when there's a special event. 
like this past Sunday morning was the Hallelujah Hoedown. And so we prepared some food, brought it. And but we have we have the church usually in the Sunday mornings uh, where we attended before, where Carl introduced me to a little church there between Pleasant Hall and Roxbury on 997. Um, so then, so then Pastor Mike asked me if I wanted to preach sometime because he had a prophetic word for me that I was called to proclaim the gospel. So the spot was open for Wednesday at 2, 2 p.m. We're at now, right? And and that's how I, how and why I'm right here now. So that's my testimony. So, so if you were brought up in church, and had an experience with the Lord as a child or a teenager, as I did, and experienced salvation for yourself. But if you had black backslidden, or like I did, told God you'd leave you alone because you wanted to do was it Moses? Yeah, back back in Hebrews eleven chapter, where Moses where Moses could have experienced the pleasures of sin for a season, but chose to follow God. Yeah, Hebrews eleven twenty four and twenty five. By faith, Moses, when he was come of years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteem the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of their reward. And he could have uh, stayed in the palace and, and did all the things that, that they did there, but he, but I, re, but I decided to, Follow the the path of to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. But if that's what but if you've done that also, there's hope for you. That's not the unpardonable sin. Or if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior or Lord of your life, I invite you to call out to Him right now, wherever you are. I'm not going to tell you to repeat after me, but say something like this. If this is your first time, then say something like, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. 
and I need a Savior. I repent. I turn away from doing wrong, and I ask you to forgive me right now. Come into my heart and my life and be my Lord and Savior. And if you have turned your back on him, then, then say something like this. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry that I've strayed away from you. Please restore to me the joy of my salvation. I repent and I accept your forgiveness. Come in and be my Lord and Savior again. So I just pray that you would take a look at my life and if you need if you need to know the Lord or come back to the Lord if you strayed away backslidden or completely turned your back on him there's still hope so just just ask him be sincere in your in your asking and yeah okay let's let's close in a word of prayer Dear Father in heaven, as we come before you at the close of this service, I thank you that you've given me the courage, the boldness to open my heart to these people, to share my testimony. And I pray that someone, if just one person would we decide to turn from their wicked ways and turn to you, then my, my job is done. That you have accomplished what, what your will, Lord. So pray your will be done in all of our lives. For we ask in Jesus' name, amen.